welcome to my live lounge uh, with the amazing Tracy Wright. Thank oh you God. for joining us. Too big of an intro. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Tracy and I have known each other for yeah, 20, 21, 20, 22 years when we were at S3 together. Um, yeah. As recruiters, good old contract recruiters. Yeah. Um, and then we worked together at VI, didn't we? We ran our uh, VI Academy, Recruiter Academy yeah. programs. and. Uh, we've been in touch ever since and you know, work really, really closely together now in terms of your business and, um, and also the L&D community, which is great. Um, everyone who knows when I do my lives, I'm always worried about my daughter being awake. Can I just say that she is, she is awake? awake. Uh, we were going to cancel, but we decided we're just going to go with it and see what, and see what happens. So, so there we yeah, go. Absolutely. But, thank you, Tracy. Um, so, yeah, you know. I, I asked you on because I know that you had had some experiences of the black dog and I, I just thought it'd be really useful if you, you know, you could share those because obviously there's a lot of stuff out there, um, a lot of experts in mental health, but I think it's really useful for pe you know, people just to share their experiences as well during this week. So yeah, you know, t tell us about kind of... Yeah, definitely. And, I, and I, when you approached me, I, I think the first thing I said to you was, oh, Jeez, I'm not an expert. Like, you know, I know you've had some. You had Katie on the other day, and I know there's people like Rhonda and Michelle, and there's a lot of you know kind of people that are specialising in this area, in particular in recruitment. And I would absolutely not put myself in that camp. But do I have experience? And um, do am I aware of it? Then absolutely, yeah, of course I am. So I did kind of say to you that you know, if you're happy just to kind of get it off the cuff a little bit, then I'd be delighted to, to have a chat and if it helps someone and I am absolutely a massive believer in um the more we talk about it yeah the better Ab absolutely yeah. yeah yeah um so I guess really for me I, I, I like the fact that you picked up on the black dog yeah um you, do you want to explain it or should I explain it I'm totally it's up to you uh well you explain it because I I I've heard of the term before and, and, and then I didn't want to use it wrongly, which is why I checked with you last yeah. night um, and I looked into it a bit more and, and I, yeah, so yeah, you know more about it than me. It'd be great if you could. Yeah, well, explain. I didn't know about it. So the black dog is basically a metaphor for depression. Um, and, and again, if, I, if I'm not exactly spot on with this, please, you know, don't write in. Um, but ultimately, uh, it's about everyone has a, everyone has a black dog. And most of the time, we've got that black dog on a leash. And it's when that black dog gets off the leash, it grows, it grows, it gets bigger, it gets out of control, and it can bite you and attack you. And that's kind of where the metaphor of depression comes from, black dog. There's a fabulous book by a guy called um, Matthew Johnston. Um, he's got two books. One is um, for the person that is living with the black dog. Right. Um, i.e. depression and the other book that he's written that accompanies that book is to help the people that are living with the person that's got the black dog right. the book. yeah um where it comes from i actually had a little look today because i couldn't remember the, the, the author's name and obviously it's just matthew's name but actually it's often attributed to winston churchill believe it or not oh, okay I never and he talks about that. having a having a black dog so so yeah so that's what it's for it's basically it's a metaphor for depression yeah yeah I, and from what I was looking into today and yesterday, it, it yeah, it just come, it can come from nowhere, can't it? It, it like you, you can actually everything can be really great and going really well, and then all of a sudden this. Yeah, so maybe the black dog is in it is linked to depression, but maybe a better way to think about it is is mental health. So we all have it, and it's how leashed or unleashed it becomes yeah. that turns it into into depression. So. Um, I guess in terms of myself, <laughs> um, I've met him three. T I've met the I've met the dog three times. Okay. And um, <laughs> um, uh, we don't know, but they will do tomorrow. Would you? Would you go? Would you do what Mummy asked? Like, remember when she said? You can sit there then, as long as you're quiet. Yeah, uh, yeah you said three times. Yeah, so I've met. You I, okay I guess... to get that, yeah. Yeah, I'm happy to share that. So I've met him once for myself. Um, I then met him through doing my mental health um, first aider training. Um, I did it with a, a chap called James, I think it's James Mayer, but again, I'll, I'll give you the yeah. details. And if you want to put yeah. that yeah. post that afterwards, a chap called James. So we did the mental health first aider at work. Um, 
And then the third time I've met him is actually with my husband. And uh, so that's the third time that kind of I came across the, the, black, the black dog. Um, so for me, um, I think it's really about the, it was about the signs. Um, for me, the, the overwhelming thing I remember about that sort of episode for me was um, just this overwhelming feeling of inadequacy like huge imposter syndrome yeah. um and i don't know if you've ever experienced imposter yeah. syndrome but it was an overwhelming feeling of um imposter syndrome by the lack of energy um again for me i stopped enjoying the things that i used to enjoy and it was simple things like going out and seeing my friends like literally i battened down the hatches i stayed in you know i didn't want to go out i didn't want to see anyone um general sort of low mood and again this is another one that i really remember strongly because I can reflect on it now. Yeah. It's useful to be able to reflect on it because I think recognizing those signs, if they come up again, I, I, can, I can question them and, and I'll talk about that in a bit. But so I just had this, I was constantly assessing my mood. I'd wake up in the morning, I'd be like, how do I feel? Am I feeling what? You know, am I happy? Am I sad? And it was, do you know what, Hannah? It was bloody exhausting. Exhausting like, doing all that. You're in your head the whole time, aren't you? Massively, yeah. massively in my, massively in my head. And I didn't realise at the time that it was the black dog. I mean, I, I, well, that, was, that was the metaphor for it. Um, but I sought help and I'm, I'm fine. You know, it yeah. was good. I sought myself out. Um, I think one thing I wanted to talk about, obviously, I've come across it with the mental health first aider. If you haven't done it, if, if, if companies haven't done it, they haven't invested it, I really, really strongly recommend you do. It was really interesting. I was a little nervous going into it because having suffered with some depression and anxiety, I guess I was scared. Would it kind of trigger something? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it didn't and I found it super, super useful. Um, and I, 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 I'm a massive advocate of companies yeah. putting their teams through it. And we chose a broad did, spectrum. Did, yeah, who did you, how did you make the decision as to who you put on the so board? We, so we made sure that we kind of like looked at it tier level wise. So we, one of the directors, Neil uh, Willis Stobbard, was really keen to get involved because, again, we wanted to make sure that we had, you know, board level, owner level ownership of it. So the company could see that at that level, we were taking it seriously and we were engaged with it. So again, I'd absolutely advocate that it's not just the mid-tier management. I think you need to get senior stakeholders part of that team. So there was like myself and Neil, and then we kind of like had a, a cross spectrum of, you know, boys and girls, young and old, short and tall, fat and thin, um, across the whole, whole spectrum of the business. And again, we looked, people that were fairly new to the business did it, as well as myself and Neil, the, you know, senior and, and like I said, Neil being an owner of the business. So oh, it's two days, it's pretty intense, and, yeah. and you, and, but it's, um, it was good. It, it was very, very useful. And then I guess the third time, like I said, the black dog I, I met him was um, with my husband. So um, he is a fire, fireman, firefighter and um, we live in the Cotswolds in the country and actually the thing that they're often not doing is putting out fires what they are doing are road traffic accidents and he attends a lot of really traumatic fatal accidents and there was one incident a couple of years ago that really um, came back and I didn't realize he didn't realize but it was just coming back and um, it was it was on repeat constantly wow. and um, again I saw those signs in him that lack of energy stopped doing things he enjoyed really low mood um, um, really really low mood and um, and again he fell into that camp of on the flow can we talk about it um, but it got to the point where it became so bad and so overwhelming that he did open up to me and he did talk about it. And again, he went and sought, um, we, he sought help with the firefighter charity. They're really, really great support with them. And he got diagnosed with PTSD and, yeah. um, and as a result, got the right treatment and managed to get the help that he, that he needed. And again, is now back in a really good, good place. So 
yeah, that's kind of my experiences with the black dog. Yeah, and you you pointed out there some some key signs of it, haven't you? And um, I get I guess it's 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 difficult for managers, isn't it? Especially now on lockdown, because you 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 have you know you're not opposite somebody all day, and I suppose you're just relying on um, Zoom calls or Teams calls or you know check in. <laughs> which, and you know from my own experiences going going through some of that, it it's very easy to be the person that's expected of you for that period oh, of time, isn't it? Mate, honestly, so, yeah. you know, those people that don't know me, I gen genuinely have a reputation that precedes me, okay? So, and that reputation is very positive, very upbeat, you know, up for a laugh, go get her, you know. And, and at the time I was doing my HR degree and I was working and, and I kind of had this, I had this, um, I used to wear the badge of busy really proudly. Yeah. And actually it was the absolute wrong thing to do. And actually this lockdown period has taught me that the badge of busy is not always the best badge to be wearing. So, so when I was going through this mentally, like in, my, in my head all the time, I felt quite, I think that's where that imposter syndrome came in because I'm, everyone had this expectation of what T-Bird is like, it was actually T-Bird wasn't in the house. T-Bird had checked out, but I had to continue to be because I felt then I'd be letting people down if I didn't continue that persona sort of thing that you just talked about. Yeah, I, but, and, and that, that's it though, because it, it is possible to continue that. It's exhausting, isn't it? You know, mm. I, I remember doing a day's training um, or so for several periods of time, but yeah, you know, you, I, you know, you feel a certain way, but the minute you get through the door, you're like, switch, bang, right, that's me, you know, eight hours, no one would ever know anything until like the no. moment that you leave. No. I, I suppose that's what, that's what worries me a bit, a bit about lockdown is, is that some of those cues um, or clues or, or whatever, when, you, when you're with somebody for all of that time over the desk, probably maybe easier to pick up than what they are now when you're just on a team score and it's easy for half yeah. an hour to just be be upbeat isn't it yeah and look like i said i'm not an expert and and that and there are some really really skilled people out there and, and but i think when it comes to work you know i've seen all of the above that i talked about um in in people i guess more work stuff that i would tend to see that i as a as a as a, as a, a manager and someone within a business that kind of looks over the people in the company it's little things that you can, it's like the language that people use. So I, I'm really, you know, and I'm learning this, Hannah, you know, I, I'm, you know, you've got to remember, I'm a recruiter, okay? And I, and I still say that, you know, I'm a recruiter at heart. So this kind of people piece is, is kind of, I'm learning my, my way. Um, but I think what I, for me, what I listen out for is that negative language. You know, all of a sudden you're hearing, I can't, it's never, and it becomes a little bit more regular and, and it's about the change in someone so it, that's what you've got to be really attuned into and again you, you're right that face to face but you leave that so you've got if you've got you list you know we're recruiters come on listen we all know that's really you've all done your training you know, you've all done my training it's all about listening and um and it's about the catastrophizing and and you know and and, the, and people what i'm what i'm picking looking out for is people that are catastrophizing the future okay and we all know that, you know, as humans, we love certainty, we like predictability, and never more has it been anything but that. So it's, you know, it's, um, it's really important that we tune into these things. I think other things that I would say to people to look out for is, it's, you know, look, up, look at lack of input. You know, if you see, a, you, 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 you see a change in someone that isn't, necessarily putting as much into your team meetings or your zoom meetings um again i'd say timekeeping but what's timekeeping at the moment that's a bit loose isn't it for, for most of us um increased sickness um you know it's just it's just about spotting the changes and you're right they're difficult when you're not face to face but there are you can look out for these other little little things that you're not not used to yeah again, what i talked about earlier that um there's the irrational, I can't remember if I mentioned it earlier, but the thing about irrational response. So for me, that's a massive um, kind of sign that I look for. So one thing that we learned in the Mental Health First Aider, which if I, if I took anything away, it's this, it's about our stress containers. 
so um again bear with me because i'm not quite got this right so we all have our, our own kind of container of stress that we can cope with and mine is a different size to yours as is a different size to someone else's sometimes my container is really small sometimes my container is really big and, and these containers grow through our life experiences and the level of resilience that we have and, and, and just through general day-to-day -day living our upbringing etc etc and, and we have our own ways of emptying the container the problem happens when that container gets full you know and you can run quite happily with a pretty full container yeah but the minute something happens that pushes that container over that's where your problems and what you'll see at work or what i always notice at work is if you have that person that just the irrational response so for example you've got a, a, a an experienced recruiter who has a no show for an interview now normally you know a whinge and a moan and and, and and they they cope with it but if all of a sudden you see someone literally just completely lose their shit over the fact a candidate's not turned up for an interview, you're just going like, whoa, what is that? Yeah, that's a classic nice. sign of someone's stress container right. overfilling because they, they've just got this, there's nowhere for them to go with this. They've got nowhere coping with it. So that's kind of... That's a sign, yeah. That's definitely a sign. Yeah. It's interesting what you, what you said about listening, actually. And you're, and you're right, you know, whether that's on a Zoom call or in, in face to face, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It, it is that art of really, really listening. And I, I read something a few weeks back that said, actually, um, if you want to do a check in, um, not like activity wise, but an actual check in with somebody to see how they are, is actually not to do it on Zoom and do it on the phone because then oh. No, <laughs> I stole it. Oh, my kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you can really, really pick up on the tonality, can't you? And you've got nothing else to focus on. I yeah. like that idea. So, literally, I've got some <laughs> little notes here. One of my last things is um, check in with people. Just go old school, pick up the bloody phone. I don't know about you. I'm no, obviously, we're zooming now, and this is fabulous, but. I'm a little zoomed out. I'm a little teamed yeah. out. I'm getting, I'm, I literally tell what's causing me stress at the moment. It's that Teams advert on the telly. If I hear that, um, <laughs> time, I swear to God. But um, yeah, just when's the last time you, we actually picked up the phone and yeah. had a conversation with someone? So th that's absolutely, yeah, completely bob on. I completely agree with that. Yeah. And that would be a tip that I would give managers to, yeah. um, to do is, don't do it over Teams. Don't do it over Zoom. Yeah. Pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Send yeah. them a WhatsApp, you know, send them a text. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. How, if managers are sensing something, mm. um, they're picking up something, how, how should they approach that conversation? Because, you know, I've, I've yeah. It... Okay. So uh, this, is, this is an easy one. Well, I say it's easy. Um, just don't be afraid to. That's the number one. Okay. You, you just, you can't go wrong by asking someone, hey, you okay? You seem different, what's happening? Is everything all right? Um, and I think you need to be really, really super aware of that first response that you get from people. Because yeah. remember, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a huge amount of fear, uncertainty and doubt. And I know you've done a, you've done a session on managing fear, uncertainty and doubt, and with doubt at the moment, but let's be honest, right? Now. People aren't gonna be open. You, on that first question, if your manager phones you up, hey, hey, Hannah, how are you doing? You're going to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really good. No, 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 no. You ask twice. And if you're still not sure you're, they're being honest with you, you ask a third time. Okay. Um, and, and that's genuinely what you need to do. You have to remember that people aren't going to be initially honest with you. They're scared, Hannah. People that are scared right now to lose their jobs. And if they think that they fess up to the fact that they're struggling or there's, there's a problem with them right now, they're thinking, shit, I'm gonna get furloughed, I'm gonna get sacked. There's all sorts of stuff that's going around in their head. So I would absolutely just, you don't be afraid to ask the question, but just be super, super aware of actually, you've got to get your big old empathy boots on and you've got to look at where that person is. You've got to do that, you know, you've got to put yourself in their shoes and you've got to think about, okay, how are they likely to respond to me? Don't make assumptions. But how are they likely to respond? And I'm going to dig a little bit deeper because they look. People are people are scared right now, and there's going to be a lot, a lot of um, 
anxiety around being honest if they're, if they're um, struggling. I tell, yeah, I, I hadn't thought about that actually. Um, yeah, and you're right. Will, will we get the, yeah, the honest answer? And getting the honest answer, I suppose it's how we then li listen to that, isn't it? And we know, we've already said how important listening is, but um, some, I don't want to generalise now, um, <laughs> but I will. Uh, but it's, a, it, it, you know, it's a positive. Men like to solve problems, don't they? I mean, I, I'm a problem oh. solver as well, but as a, you know, as a coach, we're trained not to like, you know, you have to pace and yeah. listen and pace and understand it and appreciate it before you then kind of yeah. move them towards a solution. But then, yeah. If someone's, you know, suffering, there isn't, there isn't actually a solution right now. And, and the worst no. thing you can do is start offering any, isn't it? Oh, um, mate, again, that's on my list of things of not oh, to do. You know, don't, no, 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 but that's good. Well, look, yeah. you're, we're going we're gonna to yeah. be aligned on this, aren't we? Yeah. So um, there's an acronym that the Mental Health First Aid use, which is ALGI. So it basically um, stands for A, which is assess. Assess how bad they are. And this was a real big learn for me. If you've got someone that is genuinely under in distress uh, and at the, the extreme end of that distress is someone that is potentially feeling suicidal they actually teach you to ask that person have outright are you thinking about killing yourself you know and, and, and that was a massive like whoa but i'm not gonna I, like i said there's loads of theory behind that but but the first thing is assess it you know just really assess the situation the second one is listen in the acronyms and and listen without without um without offering a solution there you go it's about big open questions but tell you know how long have you been feeling like this who else have you spoken to but there's no judgment it's just listen and i think what i found in my role as i've kind of grown into my role is that's where my strength lies uh, you know a lot of people will come to me a lot of people want to talk to me and and, and that's great and that's what i feel like i've got a position of privilege if people feel comfortable to come and speak to me um the other thing is to give reassurance to someone and just say look you know it, it, what you're feeling is completely okay and normal and there is treatment and it will pass and you can give them information yeah the ease on the algae are to encourage them to get professional help and encourage them to, to self-help so yeah it's it's difficult and I, th and I think genuinely if as a manager you're not comfortable in doing that but you have a genuine concern for a member of your team you know what there's someone in your business that will be willing to have that conversation yeah and I think the lot the worst thing you could do is pretend that there isn't a concern yeah and 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 if you're and if you don't feel comfortable for whatever reason Pass the baton. Mm. Give it to someone who you trust, who you know will have that conversation on, on your behalf. Mm. And I don't think there's any, again, this might be right or wrong, and, and if it's wrong, I apologise, but I don't think there's any harm in, 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 in owning up to that and saying, look, you know, I don't, I don't feel more confident yeah. having this conversation, but I'm worried about you. Yeah. I'm going to get Hannah to give you a call. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I think, just the yeah. that you see it is a good is a good thing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And then and then just listening and whatever answers you get back, you you get back. And then, yeah, I mean, it, we we have got a duty of care. And so if that's not a conversation that somebody you know feels equipped to handle, then yeah, absolutely. Mm. Find, you know, find somebody that that is. Yeah. It, but the main thing is, if if you spot anything, just speak up and ask someone. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't. I don't think I've ever offended someone. Well, not knowingly by asking by checking in with them and say hey how are you doing and they'd be like no i'm fine and i was like okay that's fine you know that's just mm, yeah you, the worst thing you can do is not check in and ask yeah yeah recruitment's uh, changed a lot hasn't it since uh, oh, since you no. and i were on the phones you know which is absolutely brilliant you know it could be like uh, it, like well one would actually anyone notice and two it's like wiping on the phone so uh, <laughs> they, we, won't name, we won't name check him <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, but talking about being on the phone and also you, you know i mean in in some markets it is tough isn't it things happen yeah. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Bounce back. They, they are still they, you know they are still um yeah in, in desperate sort of times really ha you know what what tips have you got for people keeping upbeat through that because it, it does feel relent it feels a bit relentless because not only have you got that challenge you've got you know of the economy and doing this bd um, uh, but then you, you've also got lockdown so that there's like this whole relentless piece isn't it have you got any tips for people to sort of 
yeah, yeah, of course I do. So, um, so I think the the, the check in thing is really important. So, um, make sure as a manager that you're not just having those KPI talks. Um, it's and again, it's really, it's really important that yeah, you have the KPI checks and and and, and talk about that and set, but th th those those genuine how are you conversations. Um, and I think as 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 leaders in business as well, we need to remember that we're doing that with with our our managers as well. A lot of focus on the managers looking after the recruiters. True. Okay, so who's looking after the managers? And actually, who's looking after you? Who's looking after me? So, so I think that's really that's really important. Um, I actually had a call a few weeks ago of someone, and it was just so sweet. He's, he's the guy in the business. He hadn't he's not been in the business a huge amount. Of time. He didn't know me anywhere near as well as other people. But he just called me out of the blue and went. Thought bet no one's given you a call recently and asked you how you were, Tracy. I was like, oh my god, that's so thank you so much. I'm fine by the way, and I'm and I'm and I'm good. And I have been good actually. It's been an interesting experience for me this lockdown to work from home. Um the other thing I think is you know, don't be afraid to show your vulnerability as a leader. Good leaders and managers are open and honest and show vulnerability. I can't remember, I read a book, I can't remember who it was. I will dig out and you can put it on your on some info, but it's about that vulnerability. And, and, and just if you're having a bad day and you're struggling, not, not struggling, but you're struggling and you're having a bad day, absolutely make sure you're sharing that with your team. They need to know they've got a safe environment where they can, they can they've got someone that, under, that understands. And if you're having a good day, share it. If you're having a bad day, share it. Oh, tips and other things, you know, it's, it's um, you know, it's about that routine. It's about certainty. It's about focusing what you can control, not what you can't control. We did a great um, video a, while, a few days or weeks ago, um, Hannah, about that and about your self-coaching piece that you did. I'm a massive fan of the Stoics, um, and it's all about what you can and can't control. So, you know, make, your, make sure your team <laughs> can't control that. <laughs> We're nearly at the end now. Yeah. Um, and then I think the other thing is... Um, Definitely don't offer solutions. People still need to be coached and allowed to find their own answers. It's really easy to dive in and give them the answers, but actually, yeah. depending on their experience, yeah. give them the scope to find the answers. The other thing I think about is, um, don't forget to still train and develop your people, and that those management styles need to be taken into account. So if you've got really junior people, they need to really clearly be shown what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Again, with your mid-tier people, that bit of autonomy, and with your senior people, give them the reins to coach themselves. Yeah, that's building confidence, isn't it? I think when yeah. we take that away from them, you you are, and I've always said this, you're sending them a message that you don't trust them to come up with the answers. Yeah. And that that anybody that's going through, you know, well, yeah, the black dog or, or any any of this to, to whatever level, that's the worst message that that, that they. Yeah, can it means you don't trust them, and that's yeah. what, and that's what they don't want. And in, and and there's enough uncertainty and, and about everything at the moment and the, the classic you know the, the the practical thing about you know setting goals and targets doing sprints using your tomato timer you know 40 minutes on five minutes off however long you want to do it obviously make sure you've got the right way around not five minutes on four minutes off um and i think the other thing also is you know so lots of goals and targets it's just you know what it's just everything you do in the office don't don't think because you're working remotely you, you can't work in the same way that you would work in the office. I think if, the thing to remember is that you can't over communicate with people um, and it doesn't have to always be you communicating. So what we've done is we've made different people talk to different teams. We have little um, recruitment surgeries where we have different people from the business get together and they just kind of offload and they come up and actually I've, I facilitate them, but I do very little. They come up with their own answers and their own solutions to the problems and challenges. And it's also about sharing the good news. Let's get some gratitude in. What have you? Don't default to what you've not done well. Let's go in with uh, what has been a success today. What's been? What? Let's get some gratitude in there and some. I've done this really well. This went really well today. Because hell, we could we could write a list as long as there are of, of the shit stuff. But actually. If we focus on the good stuff, and so we end that day thinking, you know what? Yeah, I had a really good day today because of X, Y, and Z. Yeah, I didn't pull 20 jobs, and no, I didn't do five deals, but I did loads of really good things that are leading me towards that. That's that's going to be.
yeah <clears throat> yeah I, mass I massively agree with that um especially with sort of limited working hours um from being really target driven and sucking things off and and now it's you know you've only got that small amount of time so it's easy to think well i haven't done this i haven't done that but that, that's just pointless that wasted wasted energy yeah um, get away from give people permission to get away from their laptop people will be yeah. overworking and over analyzing yeah actually that's that's not how you work in the office yeah you don't sit at your desk for four hours and not move but God, how easy is it to do that at home? I, I massively fell, fell, fell foul of that. And I, that's why I've got my ultimato timer. And I, and, 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 I, and I now I'm practicing what I preach. And yeah. it's made a massive, massive yeah. difference. Yeah, oh, that's brilliant. Kirsty says that she loves the concept of that everyone has a different size stress container. Yeah, totally Yeah, we do. And I think your own container shrinks and, and expands as yeah. well at the same time. Yeah. That's been really useful. Um, thank you so much. And apologies to anyone for, for, for the uh, interruption. Oh God, I'm going gonna, gonna to look back and think, oh my God, I'm rambling on. <laughs> I hope it helps. It's not, like I said, there's not, I'm not an expert. There's nothing earth shatteringly new, but it, it, it's, you know, a lot, of this, a lot of this people know, Hannah, they, they just have to have the discipline to, to, to practice and to do it. And you're going to get it wrong it, before you it, get it right. It's, it's, the man, it's the management piece. I, you know, I think I've been really useful there. How, you know, the signs to, to listen out for, how to actually ask how are you and to do that three times. So actually listen to the answer, get on the phone. And then, yeah, not jump in to solve and, and to listen, but then also mm. to, yeah to seek help from somebody else if you don't feel equipped i, I all of those yeah. tips have been really really useful because i you know without what we've been trained in if i if, if i was that manager hannah age 20 what was i 25 no way would i have been equipped to do with you know, to manage in this situation Work harder. Not to help anyone you know with yeah. This. so yeah no I'll, I'll finish. i think i think i might be pushing my luck now um <laughs> actually that, that's uh, that would have been less interrupted than i thought <laughs> we were going no, to be. She's been um, yeah yeah thank, thank you so so much um i know thanks that's mate cool. i hope it's all right on watch but no that was absolutely brilliant thank you and um what was i'll get you to drop me through an email with those resources that you mentioned actually the book um, which would be great and um, i'll put a blog post out tomorrow and then recommend that to uh to everybody so thank you ever so much and my internet and connection is unstable so i'll say goodbye <laughs> thank <Yeah>. you <laughs> take care <laughs> Thanks, Emma. Thanks, everyone. Bye.